You say tomatoes, I say tomatoes. So make your tomatoes, it doesn't really matter either way, they need some support. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video. There's two ways that I like to use to support my tomatoes. Tomatoes, oh my god. Well, and in this video I'm going to show you how I do it using these three stick things. Poles, yeah, that I found in the garden. The recycled ones. I treated the bottoms, yes, I've used some old engine oil. I do apologise for that. But if it's either, well, going to the shop and buying some chemical that I don't actually know what it is, or just using the old engine oil that I'd have to get rid of, because uh, I've changed the oil in my car, you know what I'm going to do? Yeah. I think, yeah, there's environmental log. I think there's a compromise somewhere. There really is. Just like EV cars and what have you. What's the point in uh, having an EV car built on your behalf when you only pop into the shop? Makes no sense. None. Totally nonsensical. <laughs> well, so what we're going to do is we've got to get those posts, those poles, those bits of wood in the flipping ground. And doing it like this, like, you know, trying to, you grab your pole, like that, and you, oh, oh, it's not going to go in, you know. No, 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 no. You can try as hard as you like. Yeah, you're fighting a losing battle. So what we're going to use, we're going to use what thing I call a monkey. Or you could call it a cyberman if you like, because it kind of looks like one. Yeah, it's a post ram. It's a bit of an overkill for this job because it's designed for doing bigger posts. And I've got a bad elbow at the moment, so this might be interesting. So, yeah, uh, I'm going to first put one in the middle. And I know where the middle is because it's where the middle pole is. Now, the polytunnel itself has got no cover yet. No. And I've already started putting my tomatoes in. Yeah, because we moved this polytunnel from somewhere else. But I don't want the tomatoes getting too hot during August, what have you. So, we're not going to put the cover on until sort of in September. Yeah, so we can prolong the season. But yeah, at the moment it's going to be open. But we've got to provide some support. Now we're going to do uh, the line method we're using uh, down the middle here, because it's going to be a row, short row of tomatoes down the middle of this poly tunnel. And over either side, we have tomatoes down there, and we've got tomatoes planted down there. And we're going to be tying lines off from the pole, this pole here, this purlin, um, to the tomatoes. Now the tomato, if you look at it, it's not, it's not vertical, no. Because of the shape of the polytunnel, I don't really want it hitting the plastic of the polytunnel and going all mouldy in that, you see, because I need the airflow. So we'll be training them like that. And because of that, the, when we've got the hottest sun, which is high, like it is at the moment, it's right above my head, and the sun's beating down it is, the actual plant itself will help sh um, shadow the uh, tomatoes a little bit at the hottest point of the hottest time of the, the day. Stop helping prevent sun scald and what have you. So that's why I'm doing it that way. But first of all, we need to get these poles in the ground. So I'm going to start with the ends. You don't want to do the middle one yet, because that's silly. You'll see why in a minute. So let's do, uh, I'll do the far one first. So I've got my bit of old wood here. Yeah, a bit of old wood. That's good enough for this job, you know. I'm not going to try, it's not going to be up there, it'll end up being about height. Yeah? And then whatever happens at the top there, I'll tie them off at the top there. Or pinch the top tags of the tomatoes. Now, the actual um, row is going to be short. Otherwise, we're going to the end where the door's going to be. Hell, oh, here's a bit of tomato pipe right in front of your face. That'll be very handy. No. Now, this is what you just eat tomatoes as you go in. Oh, that might work. So I'm, to, I'm choosing sort of in the middle, about there, up against this hoop. And the reason for that is, once it's in the ground, I could then tie that off to the post. And a post will help secure the polytunnel down to the ground. But I won't, I won't do that until I've got the cover on and push the, cover, the polytunnel frame up against the cover. The, you know, the plastic. Right. That's going to be going in there, you see. I'm going to get that in there, first of all. Oh, I've got this thing here. So let me show you that. It's, I, I had to call it a Cyberman. It reminds me of the Cybermen. You know, from Doctor Who. No? Okay. Either that or a monkey. But it's a post ram, and this is quite a heavy one. Feels quite heavy. I might put a link to one down below, but there's smaller ones as well for smaller poles. But they do make light work of it, sort of. You've still got to lift the flipping thing, though. Yeah. So if you're light frame, you might want to think, you know, think of another solution. You slide it over the top. Here. Oh, there's a caterpillar on it. Oh, gone. Like 
And then what I'm going to do is I lift the flipping thing up and bash it down. It's rocket science, yeah? So I can put my hands underneath. Now, because it's high, be really flipping careful because the edge of that can take your nose off. Yeah, it hurts. I had bonked it on my head before where I pulled off the end of the post and that hit the end of the post and the bonk, bonk and then you knocked me unconscious. I was dizzy. Yeah, really dizzy. microscopy of it not biopsy microscopy close-up video yeah and I'll put it on this channel but I'll let them go in a minute yeah that's about right sort of in line those two purlins I think I'm happy at that maybe a bit maybe a little bit more yeah that'll do that's, it. that's one so now I've got to do your end yeah not that end no <laughs> saucy don't do that in, no. I, I don't know if you washed. No, I don't. No. So that's going to go on there like that. Uh, give it a bit of a start. Another good reason, if you are putting the uh, tomato plants in line with your door, um, another good reason to use these poles is you're less likely to bash your tomato plants, you bash the pole first, if you know what I mean, if you're going in with a wheelbarrow. So that was little nails in the end of that one. And an older uh, hinge. I think this was part of a doorway at one point stay there just so I get my I need to get my rammer on yeah yeah I gotta get it on I gotta get it on my wood it's like oh it's like a flipping metal condom oh there it is yeah and almost as dangerous I mean, ah here we go again I do. If it holds a metal thing, it's going to hold your tomatoes up. That's good enough. But it's not permanent. I don't. I don't want to put them in so deep. I can't ever get them out again because that'd be silly. All right. The next one I want in line with these two poles. How am I going to do that? Oh, I wonder. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up and position it where I think it might be about right. Say there. And then I'm going to eye it up. So we'll come down this end. I'm going to eye this pole. Oh, not quite like that. Oh, I still see the bottom, that's alright. A little bit to that way. A little bit that way, and it should be fine. That's near as damn it. Just a, cat. Just a cat's whisker. If you know that pole, that, that rammer thing, it's hard work, you know. It makes you lose your breath. So that's going to go in there like that. Alright. Now later on, once I've got the polytunnel in position with its new cover on, I'll basically put a drill hole through here and use a wire from that to that. And all these things in the ground will help hold the polytunnel in position so it doesn't blow away. Because this is one of them rather cheap, like 200 euro polytunnels, 200, 250, yeah, 6 by 3 metre polytunnels, the ones that have those horrible green covers. Um, but the frame itself is actually quite rigid. It's actually quite, not a bad little frame, really. It's never right for the money. And, uh, yeah, but I've seen so many of them people where the, the cover that comes with it, the bit that's supposed to go in the ground is like that long. <laughs> that's never going to hold a flipping body tunnel down. And most people don't bother actually doing it anyway. They think they'll put a few little pen, tent pegs in. Now, I think they'll hold something like this, which is a giant kite. Yeah, that's a bit stupid. Sorry. If you've done that, 
you're, you're just silly. Yeah, very silly. So um, what we're going to be doing once we've got the cover on and lifting the whole thing up against the cover to tension the cover, I'll be putting posts in well, maybe three, maybe four each side. Yeah, and they'll be um, then fixed to the, the, the actual metal frame. A screw go right through into the posts of the actual metal framework. And that will um, help, uh, well, help, it will help hold it down. And uh, also, the two posts here, these ones here, there'll also be new posts into the ground as well. So all that stuff just makes it rigid. Less likely to blow away. Yeah, because that's embarrassment in next door's garden. You might still have all your core jets and your tomato plants. You might not have your tomato plants if you tie to it, mind. Yeah, not great. No, don't do that. So, yeah, let's get this last one in. Last pole to go in. And I'll show you how I'm going to put my lines in ready for the actual tomatoes because there'll be a row of tomato plants planted down the middle here. So let's get that on top. Oh my god, it's too tall and I'm too short. Oh my god, this is going to get scary. Oh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let's bring it down a bit. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, it's too heavy. Too heavy. Oh, that's it. It's on. Oh. Oh, I got all giddy. Alright, so now we're going to ram that in as well. That's the last one I'm going to ram it on this row. You want them spaced at about one and a half to two metres. Don't go over two metres because when you get the weight of tomatoes um, against the lines which we'll be putting in in a moment, it can get a bit hef hit and weighty. You could use wires, but I'm choosing not to. And the reason for that is the poles I could leave in. Yeah? But if I actually put wires in, it's going to make it hard to make it. If I want to rotivate this inside the, you know, I'll go round and round and round with the rotovator and it can actually, you know, and that can you know, alleviate some of the work but if I put wires across that, it's going to get tangled around the ends of the rotovator um, tines which isn't a great idea, it can make a right old mess, yeah <laughs> oh, that was obviously longer Longer pole, that'll do. Oh, that's not too far, just in case everyone get mad again. Right, so that's the post rammer done. So now we've got one, two, three poles, and well, that looks closer than that one. Oh, that's because it's on this side of the thing, I can't, can't, can't go underneath it because of the. I'll probably put it this way a little bit. That's fine. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Uh, where's my jute? Here's jute! Right, I'll bring you a bit closer in a second. So I'm going to start about a foot up, yeah? About 300mm-ish on the bottom. I'll tell you what, we'll bring you closer. I've made a special stand it's out of a piece of uh, waste pipe. I've got to show you my bit of waste pipe, which puts my, uh, it's my gimbal stand. That's a piece of plastic waste pipe. <laughs> and I flared the end to make it easier to go in, you see. Yeah, because on the camera it's got it's got like a tripod thing on the bottom and that goes into that. Oh, isn't that clever? That way I can have it standing and now I can carry it with me as well, my gimbal. Oh, I thought that was clever. No? Okay then, you're not impressed, are you? No. Anyway, let's get this uh, this jute tied. I've got to splay my legs. As you know, that's what you've got to do, you've got to splay your legs. It's a good job as a gimbal, I've gone wobbling about like crazy. So let's bring you down here. Oh god, the ground's so dry. It isn't underneath though at the moment. They've been really saturated. And we have our lovely pole. Oh, look at that lovely pole. So, you know, you start, wherever, wherever you want to start. You know, if you want to be a judgment, do about 10 inches, 9, 10 inches, and that'll be your, your span of your hand. That's probably enough. So what we'll do is we'll just tie it off around there. Do, 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 do. Go around twice. Okay, there's a reason for that. But when you bring it round, let's bring you over here. When you bring your line round, don't just do that. So you're just going round like that. Make sure when you go round, go over the top of it. Now the reason why that is, it will lock. That little we turn over the top of that help lock the line. Um, stop it from unwinding. So bring it back over here. And we're gonna just do a reef knot if you like. You can do bowman's, you do whatever you like, ready, but we'll do just do a reef knot. So it's and then I'm going from left. So left over right, and then right over left so now that one has got to go the other direction that way and if you've got a kid here you can put a finger in there hold that knot but that don't, you don't need to 
I'll put a third one on just in case. Anyhow, but that's a but that this is not that is a reef knot, and now it's not. <laughs> but you don't want a granny knot. If you go right over right, right oh, sorry, right over left, then right over left again, or left over right and left over right again, you end up with a granny knot, and that'll slip. See that that isn't slipping. So that's nice and tight. Now the boo about the jew is it's um it'll, it'll rot away eventually. Yeah. So now what we're gonna do. We're going to go to the middle, not to the middle pole, well, actually we are going to go to the middle pole, but I'm literally just going to twist it around, a couple of turns around the middle pole, and I can tighten up around and against itself again. Let's go once, twice, so it's just what I do, you've got to do it that way. So just go once, twice, put it where you want it to go. Oh, it's getting caught up here. Span up, that's what I'm doing, so it's about there. Now we've got to make sure it's tight in one direction. The direction that I just come from, but yet again, I want to go over the top of it. It's really important you go over the top, and that locks it off. So now this is tight. Play a tune on it, you could. Oh, lovely! And I want, if you want to, you could just go round over the top and back round again, like so. Create a loop over here if you want to, and start all over again. But I'm not going to. I'm just going to take it all the way over there, holding this so it's line is still sort of tight on this side of it like that so now it's in the, in the middle there and I'm going to bring it over here dee -dee 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 -dee. there's a reason why I like doing it this way you know it, you don't have to do all the lines straight away just so you know no you don't but there's a reason why I like doing it this way and that is when you have a series of these lines going up your trellis, it's effectively a trellis, well it's not a trellis, it's not a cross, but against your line, so make sure you go round, over the top, go round twice if you like, if you really must, you could eat as many times as you'd like, it really doesn't matter really, so we'll grab a knife, I'm going to cut a bit of that off at the end here, don't, don't cut it too short because you might need to tie it off again, yeah, and you could then, if you want it central, you could bring it round like that, and that way you can tighten it at the same time, see, that extra little bit of tension. And here, if you want to, you could do you could do the right over left, left over right again. Or if you want to remove the line easily and quickly, you could just bring it around like so and bring a loop through. All right, so it's just a loop like that. And effectively, it's really it's reef knot again, really. But then back around and through again. And that way, I'll make it easy because you've got this little bit sticking out over here. Right, you'll be able to undo it easy if you want to just by releasing that that line. You don't have to do it that way, it's to you. But this is all going to get scrapped, this will all get rot put in the compost later. Now as a quick tip, if you've got a compost heap and you want to uh, rot it down quicker, what you can do is actually just um, add some, oh sorry, add some nitrogen. And nitrogen will make it you know, rot a lot faster if you add some nitrogen. Now when you do this next bit, so if, you're, if you're pedantic and you want all your lines to be in line with each other, um, you need to work it from the bottom, and carry on working from the bottom each time, and not from the top. Not from the next line, next line, next line. And that way, if you do it that way, you'll get, otherwise, otherwise you'll get an accumulative error. So we'll do one more, just to show you. And then, you know, you get the gist then, of, what, of why I do it this way. So you've got a choice, you see. Once you've got all your lines up here, you can either um, tie your plant to that line, or what you can do is, as the next line comes along here, which we're about to put in, just going to have a span, so do one or from there-ish span, I'll do the same on the other end um, and then you can basically go from one side to the next side, one side to the next side and you just keep repeating that as you as you go up the actual uh, as the plant grows, and you just keep repeating that, so you go over the top, actually go over the top and then we can start it with a, a reef knot so a reef knot is right over left, left over right then I'll just put an extra one in that's it, that's what I do don't have to. Oh, hang on, can you actually see? Probably can see. See what I've done next? That's on there, don't so. It's been so bright out here, I can't actually see the screen. And because I'm filming some uh, myself, it's a bit fiddly. <laughs> so, like, see, I've got all these things in my hand. I'm, I'm trying to hold the camera. Uh, I'm bringing you over here as well. I can't actually necessarily see what's on the screen because the screen is like, so you know, all this bright light. And I'm kind of having to guess. So, I hope we've got it in the right place. There you go. So, Span, span, and I've got to go round and round and round. Do, 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 do. 
And you go around a couple of times because it, it spreads the tension on, you know, on your turns and not necessarily on the um, or oh, the knot itself. And I'm going to go around like that, and then we're going to come over to the end. Obviously, I'll make some more videos um, as we progress with this method and see how well it does. There's a few other ideas I want to do to see whether um, the garden uh, tomato growing techniques, different ideas. One of them is upside down, so we'll be doing that as well. Yeah, basically, we'll be growing tomato plants upside down. Strange, eh? So I thought. But I've done it before, and it does work. I wouldn't say it's good such productivity um, upside down, definitely not. But what it does do, because you, um, you can grow them like hanging baskets and they can be coming out of the bottoms. So it does work. It's quite handy in fact. So now we're going to go in there. I haven't put a loop in this time, so just go in there a couple of times and it's tied it off. I'll do one more for luck. So that's on there like that. Ah, okay, that's on there. So, as you can see, we've now got, they're not particularly in line, but what does it matter? Uh, we've got two lines on there at the moment. What we'll do is we'll as the tomato plants grow i will um can you see it oh yeah you can as the tomato plants grow i'll put them one side to the other one side to the other one side to the other and if occasionally if there's a truss that requires a little bit additional help so let's get that away a little bit additional help um i'll then tie it off as well but it just adds some uh, a more stable kind of uh, way of supporting tomatoes and because what you find is with things like when you use canes and what have you one of the prob problems is because you've got no lateral support, support and you get trusses and when you've got your trusses they won't necessarily um, want to go upwards. Now if you've got some tomatoes you see, some tomato plants, quite a good idea. Once the tomato plants get to a certain height, we have those little side shoots, let them grow because they, they also they'll bear more fruit. So, um, or was it a vegetable? <laughs> no, tomatoes are fruit. Um, they'll, bear, they'll bear more fruit. So, as you see, I've got my three poles in, they're reasonably in line, I do. And, uh, and on the side of that, as you see there, they've got their lines. And I'll basically wind the tomatoes up between the lines as, as the tomato plants grow, and add more lines long ways and keep doing it. And occasionally, I'll add an additional um, little tie, just tie the, if it looks problematic or it's trying to sag or what have you. See, the thing about the trusses, you see, and you've got, if you've got heavy tomatoes, like the super steaks, um, which are quite big, fat tomatoes, gigantic ones, um, they might require more support, so you could tie them individually along the, lo the actual strings, and that provides a bit of extra support. Just don't put them too far apart, don't go any more, more than two metres, one and a half metres is about ideal, but as soon as you get too far, the weight of the tomatoes will make all your lines sag, and then the whole plant will sag as well. Anyway, that's my little, uh, little video of my staked tomato system. <laughs> it's a system! <laughs> it's quite a common idea, it's nothing new really, but this is how I like to do it. And um, I use a variety of different methods. Like I say, these ones, then the, either side, as you see there's some um, already planted on, along there, and there's some on the other side of the greenhouse as well, polytunnel as well. And the beauty about that is I'll be putting a diagonal stake in, tying it off with a line, and then tying it to these purlins, these long poles, lateral poles going up that way. Um, and then we'll, I'll just wind it up the string, literally, as it grows. And it'll be twisted around the string. And that'll support the tomatoes as well. And in this case, they'll be coming in like that. They'll be coming in like a pyramid into the purlins from the outside edge up to the purlins. And the tomatoes are, should, like I said earlier, should have a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of protection. Anyway, how do you support your tomato plants? Do you use those weird windy kind of steel poles? Because I don't. Because <laughs> they cost money. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, I hope you have a lovely day. And there you go, there's tomato support for you. Maybe. Anyway, if you're most kind, boop the old like button and maybe that little bell icon because then you get one fuzzy feeling in your pocket every time I upload another mad garden eco kind of random vloggy style video because I don't edit these videos if I can help it. If I have to, I do. And also, I'll be put uploading microscopy images and videos as well. Not images, videos. So, uh, yeah, they'll be in short format most probably. Well, there you go, you know, the vertical ones. Anyway, shall I go? I think I'll get some work done, don't I? You know? I might actually go and cut some grass. Ta-ta!